Hello, this is Gary Simon of designcourse.com, GarySimon.net, and Envato Network's TootsPlus.com course instructor. So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at designing a logo in the recently launched Adobe Photoshop CC. Now, first thing I want to say, if you have access to Adobe Illustrator, that's the program you would really want to design your logo in. Uh, Photoshop, if you only have access to Photoshop, then you're pretty much stuck with using it. But it's still uh, acceptable to use Photoshop uh, if you do a few things correctly. So just before this tutorial, the previously uploaded video uh, shows how to design the logo that I'm about to show you uh, in Illustrator. So if you have Illustrator, just close this and watch that one. Now if you don't have Illustrator and you have Photoshop, you can continue to watch this and I will show you how to design uh, a logo. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to File New. We're going to call this Logo Project and I'm setting this at points and I'm personally going to use 750 by 500. The resolution will keep at 72 and we want CMYK color here. Uh, let's go ahead and hit OK and let me drag this over, open it up in a new window. And first thing I'm going to do is just use the paint bucket tool and make the background white. OK, so for this tutorial, we're going to design a logo for a fictional company I came up with, a TV series that we'll just call In Blood. So the first thing we want to do is take the type tool and we'll make black or foreground color and just type in in. Now ordinarily if you're designing a logo, one of the first steps will be just to brainstorm ideas that may be relevant uh, to the actual company for the logo. Uh, so I already did that and so what I thought would be cool, um, if the name is in blood, we can actually make the in kind of circled uh, and inside like blood splatter. Or spatter. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to hit Control T real quick and hold Shift and Alt and scale it up a bit. And now what we want to do is get the ellipse tool out here, right here. And we'll just choose a red color. Hit OK. And I'll hold Shift while dragging out a circle. So if we put this behind the in and we make the in white now we can see the basic shape now instead of just making it a perfect circle we can go ahead and use the pen tool to kind of make it like an envelope seal like one of those old seals uh, and that way it kind of just looks like a little bit like a blotch of blood so I'm gonna take the magnifying glass and zoom up and take the pen tool and make sure shape is specified and not path. And if you've never used uh, the pen tool, don't worry. It just takes a little bit of practice getting used to. But I just clicked up here randomly. And you can just kind of follow my guide, but you don't have to be perfect, obviously. So I'm going to left click and drag. And do it a couple more times. Okay, and so now we can drag this underneath and we could delete our first circle. And let's go ahead and hit Control 1 to zoom back out. So if we take uh, our Remove tool, choose Auto Select Layer, we can go ahead and just select the in type, hold Shift, and we can select both of those and just move them over. So now what we want to do is take our in type and we're going to duplicate that. Right click, duplicate layer, and hit OK. And we'll move it over here. Take the type tool, and we will make it this same color right here. And we'll just type blood. OK, so that looks pretty good for now. Um, now we want, now if I were to hide this, we can see that the, the actual in is not transparent. So I want this to be a single transparent area for the, for the type so that any background we have, we'll be able to see the background through the actual letters. 
So what we have to do in order to achieve that first is take in and we're going to go to type and convert to shape. So what that does, we can no longer edit the in. Uh, and it allows us to select it. Um, and we can even play around with the points, but we don't want to do that. What we'll do is just take this uh, direct selection tool and it automatically takes all these points and selects them. And so we can hit control C. Now what we want to do, we'll just hide that. And let's select our shape one path right here that we created and then hit control V. So now it is a part of this shape one, except we can't see behind it. So what we can do is specify subtract from shape. And we can see now that we can see behind it. All right, so that was pretty simple. Um, let's bring back the background. Now, this logo right here, I will know if it's effective if we, if we can scale it down and still see uh, the logo and, and read the type and all that. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and just select both of these layers. Uh, also for blood, we want to go ahead and convert that to a shape as well. So while, with it selected, we'll just go to convert to shape. And we could also even combine these into uh, the same layer. So we can control E with both of them selected. All right, so now we can hit control T and hold shift, we can scale it down real small. And we can see even at a very small size, we can see exactly what's going on. So that's one of the most important things about logo design is uh, readability even at small sizes. Um, so ordinarily when you have uh, the logo design, you want to reproduce the logo in various formats. Uh, so one thing is it absolutely has to work in black and white. So what we would do is take a black color, hit OK, and we would hide this background just to make sure it is a transparent background and the logo will work transparently on any background. And we would go to File, Save As, and we save it as obviously a PSD. And then we can also export it in various formats to, or save for web as well. Uh, like a PNG or a GIF or a JPG, etc. And we would denote each of those file names as uh, like in blood dash black. So we would also want to create a version that uses uh, the same color of red. So all we have to do is right click and duplicate that. Now we'll just call this first one blood black and this one will be blood dash red. And let's hide that first one. And this would be our red variation. So let's bring back both of these and let's scale them down both the same size. Oops, yeah, control T. Oops, sorry about that. It's, we have to select both of these. There we go. If we take the direct selection tool and select all of them, we can hit Control T. All right, and then we'll take the uh, the red one, position it right around here, and we'll drag them down. And so these would be two variations uh, that the logo could be used in. So in instances where there's only black uh, and white allowed, we would uh, be, we would inform them to use this logo. Uh, in ones where there's only limited colors to use, we would use this. And then finally, we can create a third variation, uh, which is one that could be used on the web or any other medium in which uh, color variance is not an issue. And a lot of uh, popular companies and brands, they, they do this. And like, for instance, Ford has a, a very uh, colorful logo with gradients and shadows and chrome and all that that they use on their website and, and in uh, TV and, and other areas as well. So we can do that as well. So let's just go ahead and one second and hit uh, duplicate layer on the red version. And we'll bring this up here. All right. So let's scale this up a lot. And we can do some things to uh, give this some more life. So we can make the 
in uh, blood spatter area right here, I uh, kind of just pop out a little bit by adding some highlights and shadows. So the way we can do that is take the magnifying glass and we'll zoom up a bit. And we'll take the pen tool and hit control H to get rid of the points there. And for our color, for the shadows, it's just gonna be a slightly darker red. So if we go up here and we want to follow the contour basically of the shape and just kind of continue on until it matches up and let's make that darker and then hit control H. All right, uh, so we have that. Now we can add a highlight. And so we're going to assume that the uh, light source is kind of coming up here uh, diagonally to the left. So let's go ahead and create a new path here with the pen tool and do the same exact thing. And then close it up. So now we'll make this a lighter kind of like a pinkish. All right. So if we uh, hit control one, we can now see that it kind of just sticks out a little bit more. Um, and we can even go ahead and do that with the uh, type and we can add highlights and shadows to that as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And I'll just go ahead and create a shadow right here. And we want this to be the same color as the shadow down here. Hold Alt and to get rid of the direction and we'll create another one right here just in between these. And then let's create some highlights. So we'll go up here. Actually, one second. You may have to play around with it just a little bit. And we'll make this that highlight color up here. And again, if you want to adjust these points after you create them, that's very simple. All you have to do is just uh, select this here. Oops. We want to bring this down and, and take that out just a little bit. So that's how we're able to edit these more specifically. Uh, and then we can go ahead and add another highlight just up here on the top of the eye. And again, make it this color. And also, we can make one more right around here on top of the eye, or the end rather. And again, if you're new to the pen tool and this is a little bit tough to follow, just give it some practice and you will eventually uh, be able to pull it off. All right, so uh, that was just a real quick, uh, we could probably spend more time adjusting these shadows to make them look a little bit better. But uh, so that works pretty well there. Um, we could even take the red here, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and what we could do is right click and duplicate this real quick. I'm going to hide this, uh, the layer beneath it. And with the uh, direct selection tool, we can just take the type. Oops. I hit 
Control H to view that and delete it. And then I bring this one back and we can double click on this to the right just to bring up the layer styles and hit gradient overlay. We can choose radial and then we can adjust the gradient in the gradient editor right here. And then we'll take this one, double click. And that way there's just kind of like a soft gradient underneath it. Uh, and this is a very, this is the preferred, we would call it the preferred logo. Um, uh, variation that we could that could be used, um, and then of course the secondary variations down here would be used in other instances where uh, gradients and a lot of co colors aren't possible. So we'd use this in TV advertisements or on the website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, one thing that we could do just to present it a little bit better, uh, just to give it. Um, obviously, you would definitely want to present it with the white background, but you can also invert it with a black background to, to show how it would work. Uh, and then we can do, even do something like, for example, we can go to deviantart.com and click on resources and stock images and we could type for blood background or something similar. Let's see here. Error with my request, do you say? Okay, here it is. And we can uh, browse around and see if we want to use one of these. So if we click on this one, uh, the author enchanted gal dash stock uh, they always kind of allow uh, put specifications in terms of how you can use the artwork so there's no need to note me just leave me a comment here on the stock you used uh, on the page and link or whatever so if you want to use this then you can just follow their guidelines a lot of times they'll say it's 100 percent free and you don't have to do anything you just use it and if you wanted to you could just click download image and this massive image will come up and I'll just right click and copy it, copy image, and then go back to Photoshop and just click on layer one and we can control V to paste it and hit control T to scale it down a lot. I'm just holding shift and alt to do that quickly. And now we have like a cool blood spatter background. We could, uh, even uh, work with it a little bit more just to make it like a white one and adjust the opacity just a little bit and essentially that is it uh, so that's one way that you can design a logo in Photoshop and what's cool is because uh, all of this all of these layers they're all shape layers they're, they're paths they're not rastered so if you have if we took one of the any of these shapes and we rastered it and then we tried to enlarge it really like say for like uh, like a 300 dpi pixel size for a print or something it would become distorted but these are all shapes so in photoshop we can still use them and export them to any size imaginable and they will still remain crisp uh, so i hope you learned a lot in this tutorial and if you have any questions go ahead and post in the comments section and i will try to answer uh, all right, I'm Gary Simon, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.